Hi, I'm Dr. J for Modern Statistics. Today, you will learn how and when to use one of the newest features in SPSS called the Relationship Map, which is an amazingly useful tool that can determine how variables relate to each other by providing a visual representation of the connections that each variable has over each other using nodes and links. And it's super easy to make and equally easy to understand what the visual represents. What makes the SPSS relationship map so powerful is that you can use it to describe relationships between variables of any measurement type. And it can be a scale variable, ordinal variable, or even a nominal variable. Doesn't matter what the variable's measurement is. Interesting, isn't it? And to make a point, using a brief example, let me show you the immediate advantages of the SPSS relationship map over traditional tools such as scatterplot. Let's go. Here I am with an SPSS data set that contains three variables. The first variable, physical health, is a self-assessment of one's physical health and is measured using a five-point Likert scale, ranging from one being poor to five being excellent. The second variable, named mental health, is also a self-assessment using the same five-point Likert scale, ranging from one being poor to five being excellent. The third variable, named Marital is a nominal variable that measures one's marital status. The values are 1 for married, 2 for widowed, 3 for divorced, 4 for separated, and 5 for never been married. Now, let's suppose that we want to test the hypothesis that people who have more positive assessment of their physical health than others are more likely to assess their mental health more positively. And if our hypothesis is correct, then as the value of physical health increases, say from one to five on the x-axis, then the values of mental health will increase from one to five. Now, before we use the relationship map in SPSS, let's first examine the relationship using a scatter plot and see what it shows so that we can better compare and see what the differences are. Okay. Now, first we go to graph, go to legacy dialogues, by the way, there is more than one route, more than one way to generate a scatter plot, but the route that we'll take here is to use legacy dialogues and go scroll down to choose scatter. And we're going to choose simple scatter. Click define. Now, uh, we'll put fiscal health assessment on the x axis. Sort of, we're going to treat this variable as an independent variable, so to speak, and then treat the mental health on the y axis. So again, our, our hypothesis is that uh, as people more think uh, about their physical health po more positively, they're more likely than others to also assess their mental health positively. Okay, um, and we'll click OK. Let's see what it shows. Well, let's take a look at this output. You may actually have seen a scare plot that looks just like this before and be, and be frustrated by it. Why? Well, this happens a lot when we use scatter plot on variables that are measured at the ordinal level, such as Likert scale. As you can see, not very interesting, is it? It doesn't really tell us a whole lot. In fact, it doesn't tell us anything. In terms of what relationship there is, we can't really tell. This is one of the drawbacks or limitations when using a scatter plot. The two variables have to be, when, gener when using scatter plot, they have to be a continuous in terms of their measurement to be somewhat useful and interpretable. Otherwise, the result, as you can see here, is almost useless. Of course, you can use other options to visualize relationships between variables of different measurement types or between variables that are not scale variables, such as using box plots, bar charts, or line graphs. But you'll have to carefully orchestrate its design, and it takes longer and many more steps sometimes to generate the final visual that you like. Now, let's see what the relationship map in SPSS can do for us using the same variables that we used here. Now, to do that, go to graphs, go to graphs, choose relationship map, and move the two variables, physical health and mental health over here. How about we also throw in a categorical variable, marital status, to see if the relationships between 
if the relationship between physical health and mental health varies depending on marital status. So bring it over here. Okay. Now, let's click on the options button. Now, there are basically two things that you need to remember. There are two things that make up the relationship map graph are node and link. Now, what is a node? Nodes are the circles like this that represent variables and variable categories. The larger the nodes are, so the, the larger the circles are, the, the, the heavier the influence, in part because it means more cases belong to that node as it gets bigger and bigger. Now, what is a link? Links represent the strength of the influence between nodes. Thicker nodes represent stronger connections and influence, and the thinner the link lines are, the weaker the connections and influence. That's really all we need to remember here. Now, here in the options window, uh, let's check one box for group links. Now, what this will do is that it will group the potentially overwhelming number of link lines to a manageable, smaller number of lines that will be easier for us to understand. So it will give us some kind of grouping, for example, uh, the level of lines, link lines from uh, weak to normal to strong uh, um, and so forth. So check that and click continue and click OK to generate the procedure. Well, fascinating, isn't it? Now, remember that the bigger the circles, the nodes, the more influence as there are more cases related to that node. And the thickness of each link represents the strength of the relationship. So the thicker the link line is, the stronger the relationship. Now let's look at one variable at a time. First, let's look at the nodes in red color right here, which are categories of physical health. Okay. People generally refer to their physical health as either good or very good. As you can see, the size of the node uh, is the, um, is the um, is the biggest uh, that represents the physical health categories. Okay. Now, and you will also notice that very few people rated uh, said that their physical health is poor. Right. Now, let's see what the relationship is between the two variables, that is between physical health and mental health. Okay. Now, among those who rated their physical health as very good, for example, they were most likely to assess their mental health as very good also. Okay. As you can see by the, uh, the thickness of the, of the link line. Okay. Obviously, it was also related to different categories of mental health, but as you can see, all the other link lines are much thinner, meaning those other relationships are weaker. Now, focusing again on the people who rated their physical health as very good, Take a look at which marital status it's most likely to be associated with. Yes, the married people. People who rated their physical health as very good are most likely to be married. Or you can say that in reverse, right? People who are married are more likely to assess their physical health as very good as opposed to uh, rating their physical health as poor. Um, and, and you can see that by the thickness of the link line, which is uh, thicker than any other link line connecting to marital status variable. Now, the second marital status category that the very good physical health category is associated with is the never, uh, never married category, which are, appears to show the second thickest link line after the married. Now, overall, those who are married appear to rate their mental health uh, very good and rate their physical health as either very good or good. Right? But if you look at the people who are never married, right here, it doesn't seem to be strongly associated with any particular health category as the thickness of the link lines that connects the never married people to all the other categories of either physical health or mental health is really pretty much the same and normal, either weak or normal. Now, did you know that you can actually move the nodes and links from left to right and we're down and we're any way you like? If you want to further explore the relationships or emphasize particular relationships more than others, 
what you can do here put your cursor over here and double click anywhere on this map like so now then you'll see this graph editor window which is a graph board editor window okay on the top menu right here it says view click that now we're going to check the box for explore mode okay now let's suppose you want to emphasize or distinguish the merit category uh, or never merit we'll, we'll, we'll go with the merit category first from all the other relationships then you can click on the node and drag it to the left or right or down or anywhere you like we'll just put it over here for now and also you can do the same for the those who are never married and to distinguish from other links put it somewhere over here like so now when I did that did you notice that putting your cursor on each link or node when you do that it displays the exact number of cases associated with it for example if I put my cursor here on those who are married there were 998 cases or people in this data uh, who reported being married and notice how also that this relationship map can easily connect between variables of different measurement type for example between the health two health assessment variables physical health and mental health and marital status all in one graph which is an uh, so the marital status is not even a variable now whether you are a student or a working professional being able to create a stunning but easy to understand visual like this can go a long way as you prepare for your own research presentation now if you find this tutorial helpful please subscribe and check the notification button below so that i can share with you many more unique features from spss thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time